morning family thank you for tuning in one more time it's sunday it's time to gather around the father's table it is time for us to be able to hear what the father has got to say to us on this wonderful day thank you for tuning in one more time and i would like to remind you every time you tune in what you do is you share give and it shall be given to you remember that scripture invite as many people as you can to watch and let's make the word of god viral today we are going to begin as we always do with the reading of the scriptures and today's reading of the scriptures is going to be done by ntate mueketsi mujadi some of you don't know his tswana name ina la gagwe ke ntate mueketsi mujadi he is going to be sharing with us the reading of the scriptures and a short uh, exhortation from the word of god and so let's enjoy and let's hear may the lord bless us i'll be back right after he finishes god bless i greet you all in the wonderful name of our lord jesus christ this is the day that the lord has made and will be glad in it Today is a wonderful great day because the Lord grace is upon us. So we are going to read a scripture and that scripture I know that the that scripture is in us. Today we are going to activate and make sure that scripture will work for us. So the scripture of today is according to Proverbs chapter 3 verse 1 to 12. It reads thus, My son, do not forget my teachings. I repeat that one. My son, do not forget my teachings. But let your heart keep my commandments. It's very important, that verse 1. And verse 2, it says, For length of days and years of life and peace, they will add to you. Do not let kindness and truth leave you behind them around your neck write them on the tablet of your heart behind them meaning those words write them in the tablet or on the tablet of your heart so you will find favor and good repute in the sight of God trust in the lord with all your heart and do not lean on your understanding i repeat that one because we usually know about this verse and we always recite it and without any understanding trust in the lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding in all your way acknowledge him and he will make you your path straight do not be wise in your own eyes fear the lord and turn away from evil i repeat that word do not be wise do not be wise in your own eyes fear the lord and turn away from evil it will be a healing to your body and refreshment to your bones verse 9 honor the lord with your wealth and from the first of all your you your produce so your barns will be filled with plenty and you, your vats will overflow with new wine verse 11 it says my son just as it it, it has already said in verse 1 My son do not reject the discipline of the Lord or loathe his reproof for whom the Lord loves he reproves even as a father corrects son on whom he delights so brethren family what we should learn today it is one because the teachings of the word 
do shape us and as they shape us we now change from who we are to become true sons that will follow each and every step that the word is saying to us so once you are embrace the word in other words it will change the image of us our character and our thinking and our personality this will help us in order to think the way god has planned for us to be successful at all times in verse 5 of proverbs 3 it says trust in the lord with all your heart and do not lean lean on your own understanding learning in your own understanding without checking what you have been taught it sometimes leads to nothing because at the end of the day you are now looking or making things the way you see them as if they will work for you without checking what says the way even at school there are certain things that you have learned and those things that you have learned you must always bring them to practical so even the word of god you learn you've been taught and you are now bringing it to be a thing a that will make you become who god wants you to be learning on your own understanding leaning on your understanding will without checking that weight it will allow god to shut down so in other words once you think so you are not allowing god to speak to you at this moment allow god to shut down your flesh the eye of your understanding so that the word that you have been taught be activated meaning that the word become the spirit so that the flesh should die so that it should not be able to dictate to you what you must do and what says god because the spirit when the spirit lives in you it means god is in control god speaks to you god guide you god heal you god always touch you in order to become the son for the word of god says in john 6 63 it is the word it is the spirit who gives life the flesh profited nothing the way that i have spoken to you are spirit and are life the word that i have spoken to you are spirit and are life check that one because if you use your own flesh it means now that what you see with your eyes becomes something that will always come into your thinking showing that this thing that you see it is something that will make you or that will push you in order to go to a certain level so today i want you to understand this weight and i want us to pray according to this verse of proverbs chapter 5 lord allow your weight to shape us lord teach us to trust in your weight do not, do not let your kindness and truth leave us because your truth is life. May you be blessed at this moment and may the word of God keep you, direct you, show mercy and grace. Amen. Thank you to Ndate Mujadi for that word that is meant to show us it's almost like a scripture that speaks about sowing and reaping.
you know, my son, if you do this, this is how it will happen for you. If you do this, this is how it will happen for you. And I'm sure you have taken out a few nuggets for yourselves. If you have just tuned in, thank you very much. You are welcome. If you are a visitor, indeed, you can even write there on our comments to say I'm a visitor. We will make sure to thank you for tuning in. Uh, don't forget to share. If you're a son of the house, share the word, share the link, share the message, let the word of God go viral. Today we are on part five of never stop growing. Never stop growing. And so far we have covered the truth that spiritual maturity has a form which is character comes before gifting. And we said again, spiritual maturity has a principle. There's a principle you have to follow in order for you to get to the place of spiritual maturity. By the way, spiritual maturity is something that we have to do our whole life. In other words, you are supposed to be going for spiritual growth your whole life. There's no point. Even when you are an old man, there's no point where you can say, I have arrived, I think I don't need to be growing beyond where I am. We always, all the time, need to be growing. You arrive when you leave this earth. When you arrive in the presence of God beyond death, that's where you arrive. But as long as you're still alive, you have to keep growing. So the principle of spiritual growth is consistency. It, it also sounds like the word persistence. You persist and you become constant in what you are doing. And the third thing we said, spiritual growth has a process, which is what we are dealing with right now. And then the spiritual growth has a practice. And finally, the fifth thing is that spiritual growth has an outcome. The process, okay, the process of spiritual maturity, where we are now. When we talk about the process of spiritual maturity, it is when you begin to see, where you start the process, is when you begin to see that the word of God is a seed. You have to recognize that the word of God is a seed. Then you'll be able to understand how to handle the seed and that any form of maturity begins in the seed form. Like we read in the book of Luke chapter 8, verse 11, Jesus, when he was giving the decoding of that parable, he said, and the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. And the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. But not only should you see the seed as the word, but you must also be able to identify the soil and be able to see that the heart of man, your heart, my heart, this is the soil because the seed is sown in the soil. Or, yeah, the seed is sown in the soil, which means the word is sown in the heart. And if the seed grows on the soil, it means the word must grow in the heart. Meaning spiritual maturity is when the word of God grows in your heart. Remember we read the book of Romans chapter 12 verse 2 where it tells us that be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed. When the word grows in your heart, you begin to transform. And when you begin to transform, that is called uh, spiritual maturity. Like Mr. Mujad was saying, you become a true son. You begin to manifest the characteristics of the son of God himself, Jesus, and you become a son. So you must be able to see the seed, the word, but you must also see the soil. 
your heart. The word is planted on your heart. What is the heart? The thoughts. So the word is planted to renew the way you think. The word is planted in the heart. The will. Your will changes from doing your own will to doing the will of God. The word is planted on, on the emotions. You control your emotions through the implantation of the word of God. So you are able to determine whether you are doing things right or not because the word helps you. And the more you learn, you will see when we come to uh, the practice of the word. You will see the scriptures that we use. They will show us just how important it is for us to practice because in practice that is how we also get into uh, the maturity. But today we are dealing with the issue of the word of God, uh, spiritual growth as a process. We read also Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 where it says, Guard your heart with all diligence. The seed must be guarded. You need to guard the word of God in your life. You need to guard. Listen, listen. You see, when, when we preach the word of God, you've got to understand how much it takes for us to just prepare that. It's almost like a mother preparing a meal and feeding his family or feeding his child Everyone must appreciate the effort that the mother has made, the effort that the mother has taken, even if it's the father, but the fact that they have prepared the meal. So when we prepare messages, when we prepare ourselves to preach, brethren, sometimes it takes time. It's not an hour. I have to be honest with you. Sometimes it takes up to five hours to prepare something you are going to say for 45 minutes. And so, it means that what you are receiving, you have to be diligent with it. You have to protect it. You have to take it seriously also. Just as serious as the one who prepared that word. Because you don't only, pre only prepare verses, you prepare your heart. You want the Holy Spirit to become the one who speaks. Because men shall not live by, live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of of God. So the seed is protected by you guarding your heart, guarding your thoughts because they can kill the word. Guarding who influences your will because that can kill the word. Guarding your emotions and not succumbing to emotions that are going to eventually kill what God is building inside you. Let's get to this place. When Jesus gave that parable, the parable of the sower and the seed, Jesus was basically saying there are four kinds of believers. If I were to uh, bring it to today, Jesus was actually saying there are four kinds of believers. The first type is the one who has a heart that does not receive the word, a hardened heart. And one of the things that can harden the, the heart of a person is continuous disobedience to God. Continuous disobedience to the word. That can harden your heart. When the word comes, it's just taken. So a, a heart hardens so much that even when God rebukes, the person doesn't hear anything anymore because it's a wayside heart. May that not be your testimony. May that not happen to you. And Jesus gives us the second type of heart. He says, those who cannot withstand temptation, those who cannot withstand persecution, the soil or, yeah, the soil that has got stones, the soil that has got stones, those stones, they represent offense. Those stones represent spiritual weakness. And so what must the person do you must just take out the stones deal with things that are going to kill the word in your life jesus is actually saying that if we run from persecution if we are overcome by temptation all the time 
our heart has got stones. We will hear the word, it will bless us, but those offenses, those so-called hurts, but also the persecution. You know, I just have to ask you a question today. What persecution have you gone through because of the word? Because persecution is part of our journey with Christ. You will be persecuted for believing in Christ. You will be persecuted for being a son of God. And the Bible says when persecution came, the word did not produce. When we run from persecution, brethren, the word of God loses its power in our lives. So we have to stand. Stand for what we believe in. Stand for what God has said to us in his word. And then Jesus puts the third kind of believer. It is a believer who, in summary, I can say, is controlled more, than, uh, more by worldly things. It's a believer who is controlled more by worldly things. He says the cares of this world. Now, cares is not about worry. No, Jesus is speaking way beyond worrying. What actually Jesus is saying, the cares of this life is all the things that take our time. I have to take care of this, I have to take care of that. You know, I have to take care of that, I have to take care of that. You, you are so busy that the word of God has no time to mellow and mature in your life. Your life is caught up by too many things. And he says the deceitfulness of riches. In other words, rather than trusting God, we trust riches. And so we run after them and never make any time for the word of God. And he said the third one, and it is the, the love for pleasure, where you make your life become defined by being in too many pleasures. Now that's worldly. Any son of God, any child of God who is controlled by worldliness, they are weakening the ability of the seed to grow inside them. And I pray that that will not be your testimony, that you will become this fourth kind of believer. The believer who has got a good heart, has got a good attitude towards the word, a good attitude towards the teaching of the word, and takes it seriously. So we must remember that the, pers the purpose of the process is to produce spiritually mature sons for God or sons who will ever be increasing in how they bear fruit. In other words, increasing all the time. And I want you to watch, please. When Jesus spoke about the seed and the sower, he does not say it produces uh, vegetables. It says it produces fruit. In other words, God does not want us to be uh, our hearts. He does not want our hearts to be like a vegetable garden. You know, the problem with a vegetable garden is that you plant this year and you have to remove and replant next year. Start from scratch. God wants your heart to be like an orchard where people will pick fruit every time. And we will talk more about that later. But you have to be like an orchard that bears the, the proper fruit at its time. So, where does the process start? I think by now you should be knowing. By now you should be able to tell where the process starts. And the process starts with the sowing of the seed. What is the sowing of the seed? It is the sowing of the word. What is that word? If you check the word, word. If you check the word, word, in what Christ was saying that the seed is the word. That word is the Greek word logos. So the planting of the logos. What is the logos? The logos is the thought that is being communicated. So the preacher gets the thought of God and relays it to the ones who are listening. That is the Logos. It is the thought 
that is being communicated. It is the topic that is being addressed. Let me tell you, it's so important for you that when you listen to the word of God, do not forget the topic. It helps you to be able to listen accurately so that you can be able to know where does this word apply. So it is the topic addressed like now. The topic here is never stop growing. And the third uh, thing that we have to see about this word, what is the logos? It is the reasoning or the motive behind it. So when we preach, in a sense, even though spiritually, we are reasoning with you. We are trying to show you what God is saying. And by the help of the Holy Spirit, we are communicating those thoughts to you, reasoning with you so that your will will tilt towards the Word of God. Your will will tilt, tilt towards the will of God. And also, the Logos is the divine expression. The divine expression is Christ himself, how he comes out. That's why John chapter 1, verse 1 says in the beginning was the word in the beginning was the logos in the beginning was was what god is communicating christ came as a communication of god that's why the bible i think it's psalm 107 verse 20 it says and he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction who did God send? For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. So when God sent Christ, he was sending the word that would bring healing to all mankind. So the picture that Christ was giving us was clearly showing that the matter about the seed does not end with the sowing of the seed. The matter of the seed does not end with the sowing of the seed. But when the seed of the word is sown, there has to be a conducive relationship between the seed and the ground. There must be a conducive relationship, a proper relationship, a productive relationship between the word and the heart. Then the word of God will begin to produce. So, remember the principle that I spoke about in the past that says, be careful how you hear. But also, in the book of Mark, on the same parable, he says, be careful what you hear. So in the book of Luke, Luke says, he said, be careful how you hear. And Mark says, be careful what you hear. Let me tell you something. There is no uh, 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 substantial difference between these two. Because remember, this is just a translation from the Greek. When he said, be careful how you hear, Luke 8, 18. Be careful what you hear, Luke 4, uh, Mark 4, 24, sorry. Mark chapter 4, verse 24. How you hear, when you look at the word how, you're going to see it speaks about how much you hear. How much you hear. But you can agree with me that how much you have heard translates to what you have heard. What is it? The value. The weight of what you have heard. So Jesus is actually saying, be careful about the manner in which you approach the seed because it is how you posture yourself as a receiver. When the Father is speaking through his chosen vessel, that will determine what will happen to the seed. It is how you posture yourself when you are listening to a, servant, a, a, a vessel of God that will be able to determine how you hear the seed. And this is what he says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. So 
the word that is preached, it has got to be mixed with faith inside our heart. And that mix, that faith, translates to the posture. Lord, I am ready to receive whatever you want to say to me. Speak to me. I will embrace it. I will take it. Whether you are rebuking me, whether you are guiding me, whether you are encouraging me, whether you are exhorting me, Lord, I receive whatever you will say to me today. So it's not about the vessel, even though the vessel is important, it's about the word that God wants to communicate. So the word that has been planted is when you receive the instruction from God. It is a, rev a revelation from the Father. That is how the process begins. The lights come on. You hear something, most probably for the first time, and then the seed has been planted. That's where the process starts. But then, when the seed is sown, it needs to be watered. Because no fruit grows of itself. Now, when you read the parable itself, you are going to find out that when Jesus says, the word is sown on the ground and the ground produces, okay? There are implied actions right there. There are implied other processes that are not uh, stated openly, like you know, because Christ knows that those people understand that when the seed is sown, it cannot grow if there is no water. So when the seed is sown, it must be watered. When the seed is sown, it has to be watered. Now, go with me to Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 1 and 2. Let's talk about the water. It says, Give ear, O heaven, heavens, and I will speak. And hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. Let my teaching drop as the rain, my speech distill as the dew, as the rain drops on the tender herb, and as showers on the grass. Now listen to what he says. He says, give, earth, uh, give ear, O heavens, and hear, O earth, O uh, the words of my mouth. He says, let my teaching drop as rain. The word teaching also means instruction. Let my instruction drop as rain. But also the word teaching means doctrine. Let my doctrine drop as rain. Now, we are shifting now because we are talking about the seed after it has been sown, it has to be watered. Then, if my instruction, if my doctrine is like rain, we know that rain is water. So we see that the word is not just seed, but the word is also water. The word is not only seed, the doctrine is also water. Water from heaven, water that is called rain. I'm sure some of you have already uh, thought about this scripture. Let me read it. God bless you if it has just jumped into your spirit. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 10 and 11. He says, For as rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud. In other words, it waters the seed that is on the earth. It waters the seedlings. It waters the trees that are on the earth that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Verse 11. So shall my word be. What is God saying? He says, my word is like water from heaven. My word is like rain. So shall my word be that goeth forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Okay, let's just pick one thing here out of these many things that we can talk about. Let's pick one thing. God says, my word is like rain. And we know that rain waters. God says, my word is like rain. And we know that rain waters. What does it water? The seed. 
What am I saying? I'm saying that the phase of sowing the seed must be followed by the watering. So, let's at least come to this agreement so far. If the seed is the word, and the water is the word, then the word waters the word. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If the seed is the word, and the water that must water the seed is also the word, then the word waters the word. Let me explain it by using this scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. This is what Paul says. He says, this will be the third time I'm coming to you. He says, by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. In other words, for every word to be acceptable, it needs a witness. And here we are seeing that the, the seed is the word and the water is the word. So the word waters the word, then it means scripture witnesses scripture. So if you want the word of God to grow all the time in you, you have to water one revelation by bringing another revelation on top of it about the same subject. You have got to bring truth upon truth. You must bring line upon line. You must bring precept upon precept. You must bring revelation upon revelation. One, one scripture witnesses to the other scripture. One scripture confirms another scripture. Like it says in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 12. Though one may, over, may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. In other words, you have one scripture that is supported by another scripture. Even if the enemy comes against you to attack you on that scripture, you can hit him with another scripture that says the same thing. So, the water of the word is the word. The watering of the word is the word. Keep that thought and let's move with it. Let's move with that thought. So when you understand what it takes, the word, or in other words, let me put it right. When you understand that it takes the word to water the word, then you will understand that you need to stick with that word and you must find a witness, another word that witnesses to that truth and water it or confirm it or witness that revelation with another revelation. And that is how it causes growth. That's how you begin to grow. In other words, you can, you can be able to draw truth from different directions to speak the same thing. Let me give you a simple example. We preach about healing. We talk to people about healing. And so, let's take just a statement that says my healing is a done deal let's take that statement my healing is a done deal okay what scripture do we normally you think about we think about isaiah chapter 53 verse 5 he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed that is the scripture let's say you receive that as the seed that is sown but you need to water it. How do you water it? You get a witness. You get another scripture that says the same thing. First Peter chapter 2 verse 24. So First Peter chapter 2 verse 24 can become the witness of Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5. And you have two witnesses which cannot be broken down. In First Peter chapter 2 verse 24, who himself took our sins upon himself in his body on the tree that we being uh, 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 made righteous may uh, 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 may live unto him something like that and then at the end it says by whose stripes we were healed so it's not only isaiah 53 verse 4 
it is also first peter chapter 2 verse 5 but you can you have to keep watering it and you come with romans chapter 8 verse 11 that says if the spirit of him who raised jesus from the dead dwells in you he who raised christ from the dead will uh, uh, give life will quicken will give life to your mortal bodies so you keep piling piling truth one revelation after another that is the one way of watering the seed you get witness for it you witness it with other scriptures that's why when we teach you a subject we bring many scriptures that talk about the same thing the one is can be the revelation but the other can be the water the one can be the seed and the other can be the water but also the way you water the seed is by going through that word again and again reading it through again and again you water the seed by declaring that word again and again you water that seed by meditation over that truth i know some of you are remembering this scripture i'm about to uh, share with you psalm chapter one that talks about the blessedness of the man who does not walk in the counsel of the godly, stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of the scornful. His delight is in the law of the Lord, but he meditates upon it uh, a day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. In other words, he has a revelation, but he's connected to water. The word watering the word. The word watering the word how do you water the seed you listen to the message again and again you read that verse again and again you go back that's why listen that's why when we read the bible you can never say i have read the book of matthew i'm finished with it i can't go back no you have to go back because whenever you go back you are in the watering process you are in the process of watering it. Uh, you know, just the other time, I have this uh, app. You can over-download it free on the App Store or wherever uh, uh, you, 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 you get apps. It's called Bible.is. Bible.is. Bible.is is scriptures. You can read the scriptures or you can listen to them. So my wife and I, we use it most of the time to listen to it. And a time came where I listened to the book of Hebrew. I just wanted to connect the whole book. I cannot tell you how many times I have listened to the book of Hebrews until this past, I think it was Thursday or Friday, uh, where I was listening, and because I listened many times, the thing started connecting. It connected so clear that I shouted out loud, audibly. I said, wow, because I saw something and I got part of what I was looking for. The word watered the word and the word began to grow inside me. So repetition is the name of the game if you are going to grow spiritually. You've got to go back to the scriptures. You've got to get a witness to that scripture. That's how you water the word in you i want to start uh, rounding up proverbs chapter 25 verse 2 proverbs 25 verse 2 says it is the glory of god to conceal a matter but the glory of of kings is to search out a matter in other words god maintains his glory by keeping certain truths or certain levels of revelation to himself not giving them just to anybody that is why you cannot expect an unbeliever to understand the word of god they can comprehend it by reading it and looking at the words but they cannot get into the depths of revelation no matter how intellectual they are no matter how well they can reason and analyze they can never tap into the glory of god without jesus christ and when the bible says it is the glory of god to conceal a matter you know what the matter is it's a word that word matter is dabai 
in Hebrew, a word, it is the glory of God to conceal a word, to conceal a truth, a revelation. But it is the honor of kings to search it out. You see, you are a king through Christ Jesus. So your honor is in searching the word. Your honor is in receiving a truth and still going ahead and searching the same truth deeper and deeper. What is to search? You know what that word search means? It means to penetrate the matter. You have to penetrate the word of God. Like we say, you must pull out the, the, the juices that are in the word, but what the attitude you must have is the attitude of one who is searching. Go into the depths of the truth of God. What are you doing? We are watering the word. In Luke chapter 8, verse 9 and 10, listen to what Jesus said to his disciples. Then his disciples asked him, saying, what does this parable mean? This is the parable we are talking about. And he said, to you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. You see, when God hides a thing, it becomes a mystery. So it is the honor of God to hide, to make his truths a mystery, not give them just to anyone. He is looking for the kings who will come and search out the matter, search out the truth. He says, but to the rest it is given in parables. You know what is a parable? The parable is a story that is meant for those who hear it not to understand it. It's a mystery. A parable is a story that you are given with a hidden truth. That's why Jesus spoke about the seed and people didn't hear. He said, okay, let me tell you the mystery behind. So you have a right to the mysteries of God. Praise the Lord. You have a right to the mysteries of God, but you have to enroll in the school of searchers. For you to grow spiritually, for the word to mature in you, for you to grow into sonship, learn how to search the word for truth. Let me close with this one. I'm going to read the same scripture in the Passion Translation. It says, God conceals the revelation of his word in the hiding place of his glory. But the honor of kings is revealed by how they thoroughly search out the deeper meaning of all that God says. That sounds to me like having a seed and watering it. The word waters the word. God conceals the revelation of his word in the hiding place of his glory. But the honor of kings is revealed by how they thoroughly search out the deeper meaning of all that God says. And remember, of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Your mouth will begin to speak those things that you have found in the fountains of God's depth. So it means the question that you and I must start or must ask ourselves is when you read a word or when you get a revelation, you need to say to you need to ask what else does the Bible say about this? What else does the word of God say about this? That's how you begin to mature. Because as that comes out and you receive an, a revelation on top of a revelation, your spirit becomes built, your soul becomes transformed, your life is transformed. So remember that when we first put spiritual maturity, in other words, in other words, at the beginning, you remember I said, this is the way you can explain spiritual ma maturity in other words, using other words to explain spiritual maturity. I'll choose only two of them. Maturity is being qualified to handle the treasures of heaven to be revealed on earth. That's spiritual maturity. That's the searcher. Maturity is being a son who can be entrusted with the father's business like Christ. Listen, our goal is to be like Christ. So we water the seed to go deeper into the word. 
we water the seed so that we can be like Christ, we can become true sons of God. Christ, who is the Word, manifest His nature. I pray that the Lord will help you never to stop growing. I pray that it will become your aim. And listen, as you scale the mountains, as you overcome one challenge after another, don't rest. Don't sit down and say, whew, I've, I've done it, you know, I've overcome. There are more places to conquer and there are more revelations. They say the word of God is as deep as God himself. Let's go for it. Let's look for the water that will water the seed at all times that we may bear fruit to his glory. God bless you. If you are out there and you are saying, Pastor, you know what? I, I've heard you partly, but I need Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Just write it down there and say, please pray with me. We will make sure that we contact you and we pray with you and help you to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The Lord bless you. Right now we are going to receive a short exhortation for offering and I'll be back to do the benediction. God bless. Good morning, saints. We thank the Lord for his word. It's time for offering. When we offer to God, we do not make him rich because he says in his word, silver is mine, gold is mine. Giving is another form of worship. We give to advance the kingdom of God. We support the ministry of our local church by our giving. Let us look at the book of Mark, chapter 12, verse 41. It says, Now Jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw how people put money into the treasury. And many who were rich put in much. This is a sign that our giving is monitored in heaven. When we give, it attracts God's attention. Jesus was observing how much people were giving, and later he commented on it. God consider what is worth to the giver. If what you give has no value to you, then it has no value to God. Jesus measures the generosity by the condition of the heart. Let us look again at Acts chapter 10, verse 4 and verse 31. Cornelius stared at him in terror. What is it, say, he asked the angel. The angel replied, Your prayers and gifts to the poor have been received by God as an offering. Verse 31. He told me, Cornelius, your prayers have been heard and your gifts to the poor have been noticed by God. This is a real sign that our giving are monitored and recorded in heaven. As we give, let us give willingly. As we give, let us plan our giving. The word of God says, each should give according to his purpose. So giving must be planned before it is presented. So let us look at tithing. We should pay our tithe accordingly. Tithing is a command. If you don't tithe, you are disobedient. It is God's money and it opens the windows of heaven for the blessings to come in. Tithes and offering go together. You cannot tithe and not offer. You cannot offer and not tithe. They go hand in hand. Let us look at the first fruit. The first fruit is a requirement by God. It is guaranteeing his blessings on the rest of the harvest. Whatever you plant, God has shows that the rest of the harvest will do well as you bring your first fruit to the house of the Lord. 
Our faithfulness to God with his money is a sign of spiritual maturity. We have been listening about spiritual maturity. So as you mature spiritually, your finances also must show that you are maturing. So children of God, let us do the right thing. All what we have belongs to God. He says once more that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. So give because all what you have belongs to God. That is what I have to encourage you for offering. So in our church, in this situation, we use the EFT, or you come to the office, use the speed point during office days, Monday to Friday, or you come to the office with your envelope and present it. That is how we present our offering in this time. May God bless you as you give. May God enlarge your territory as you present your tithes, your offering, and your first fruit. Thank you. Greetings once more, family. Thank you for tuning in today. And I think the word has blessed you. And it will also mature you. And I would like to say to all, keep on tuning and also keep on growing. May we pray and may we receive the benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and your family now and forever. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord. Have a blessed weekend and may the Lord keep you, protect you, show mercy and grace. Amen.